First of all, welcome to the Tromica family. It's a bit strange to be doing a presentation like this where we haven't got an audience in front of us and we're not all sat in the school hall. But I'm sure you understand under these unprecedented times that we're trying to do our best to give you a flavour of Tromica and a flavour of what we will be expecting from you in September and what we will be providing for your child in September as well. At this time, of course, we don't know what September is going to look like for schools and whether we will be inviting all of the children back full time. But I'm sure as time goes on, the government will be telling us what needs to be done and what the next steps will be as we start to come out of lockdown. So I hope you find these slides uh, interesting and I hope they give you the information that you really need. If at any point you need to contact me and find out more, then please do email me on the head at trumaca.lanks.sch.uk email address and I will try and get back to you as quickly as I can. Trumaca has a very clear vision. We want to provide an inspiring education so that each of our children can work hard towards achieving their dreams. This was seen very clearly in our last full inspection in 2016 and was reaffirmed in our recent inspection earlier this year where we were still shown to be a good school and we were driving forward in all areas. We have a very clear motto within the school and that embodies everything that we do around the school and all of our expectations of the children, of the parents, of the staff and of the governors and of the wider community at large who come and work with us and share in all of those rich experiences for the children. So it is a very warm welcome to you all. You are now part of our Tromica family. And really what this whole presentation is about is to explain to you what your child's journey is going to be like as they start their next seven years as a Trumacarian and a part of this incredible school journey that they are on. So first of all, here is a list of some of the people you will come into contact on a regular basis. Some of the names you'll already know, some may well be new to you. But if I can just bring a couple out, of course, my name is Paul Slater. I am the head teacher. I've been a head teacher now for about 17, 18 years, and I've worked in many, many schools. I also run a, a multi-academy trust, which is in Cumbria, which consists of another three schools. And Trumica is already considering about joining that trust and becoming part of that mat. So when I'm not around, the school is run by Mrs. Hamer, Kerry Hamer, who, although she's there as the deputy head, she is also trained as a head teacher in her own right. And she is ably supported by Mrs. Burrow, who is the assistant head and the early years leader. In reception then, we have Mrs. Bowler, who works alongside Mrs. Burrow as the two teachers that take our two reception classes. And of course, many of you will know that the other member of the teaching team for early years is our nursery leader, Mrs. Smith. Now, some of you may need to contact our Senko, who is Mrs. Morby, and you may want to discuss any issues around your child and their learning and their development as they start school or prior to starting school. And again, you can email her as well. And her email address is senco at trumaca.lanks.sch.uk. Within the reception area, we also have three wonderful teaching assistants, Mrs. True, Miss Edwards and Mrs. Whiteside. And many of you will have already been in touch with Mrs. Collin, who is our school business manager, or Mrs. Lane, who is our admin assistant, who sits behind the screen at the, at the front of school and deals with the day-to-day -day contact with parents and also over the phone. We also have our Tigers Club, which is run by Mrs. Kendall and Miss Stevenson, amongst many other staff. And that runs before school and after school every day. And all children are entitled to take a place in that provision and it just has to be organised through the school. Now I mentioned our school vision earlier. 
This is it. We want to give every single child that comes through our doors that positive and supportive education so that they can achieve their full potential. And it's their full potential, not in comparison to other children, not comparing chalk and cheese. Children are good at different things and we want their potential to really shine out so that we can help them to carry on to grow in what they are good at but also develop the things that they find difficult and to help them and support them to achieve in the future. And all of that is done in our safe, secure and enjoyable atmosphere, which is right across the school. We want children to enjoy being in school. An enjoyment of being in school will lead to a full enjoyment of learning. And if we can get them to learn better within school and enjoy it, then when they go up to high school or into further education later on, they will hopefully keep that love of learning and keep wanting to achieve as much as they can. So we have that inspiring education. We want them to achieve our dreams. And that is all underpinned by our one school rule, which may sound draconian to some parents, but it is really clear and simple for the children, for parents, for staff. And that school rule is simply do as you are told. Now, it sounds quite draconian, as I said, but it's about this whole idea that we don't brook any nonsense. If there is something expected of children and they are asked to do something, and I do stress the word asked, then we expect them to do it. That is what it is about. So if they are asked not to run down corridors, we expect them to do it. If we ask them to be polite to one another, we expect them to do it. If we ask them to do their homework, we expect them to do it. And the same applies to parents. We always joke with the children that it is the same rule for parents. If we ask you to come to parents' evening, we expect you to come along. If we ask you to come to an assembly, we do try and arrange them for them to be first thing in the morning so that hopefully you can come before you have to go into work. But we ask and we would like you to be there on that journey with your child. And it's the same rule for staff. I ask them to do things for your children or ask them to do things for the good of the school and I expect those things to be done. And they do, they always come up trumps. So one school rule for all of us that belong in the school. Now I'll hand you over to Mrs Burrow who's going to explain a bit more about early years in and of itself. Our vision for EYFS we want your child to be an active, independent learner who uses their play to make decisions, negotiate with others and think for themselves. Be involved with the planning of sessions to increase their motivation and enthusiasm. We want your child to take risks and accept challenge in our controlled and secure outdoor environment as our outdoors is an extension of the indoor provision. Finally, we want them to be fully involved in all we can offer, even if that means they come home a bit messy from digging in the sand, in the mud and the soil and playing with the water or being out in the rain or the sunshine finding worms and insects. So what is the EYFS? The EYFS or Early Years Foundation stage is a curriculum that runs from birth until a child is five years old. It builds upon previous experiences in nursery and at home and is made up of three prime areas of learning and four specific areas. To keep track of progress, we assess all the children on their entry into reception. We call this the baseline assessment. However, from September 2020, things have changed slightly and the government has now put in place a statutory reception baseline assessment for all schools to do. This will entail a short practical assessment on a one-to-one -one basis with the teacher and shouldn't take any more than 30 minutes. The results will be sent to the Standards and Testing Agency, which is the government. They're going to take place within the first six weeks of children starting school. They won't be given a score as these tests or 
assessments are seen as a way to measure the progress of the whole cohort. That's the whole group of children at the end of Key Stage 2. So they will look at all the progress made from reception up to Year 6. However, this won't replace our current methods of observation and tracking of your child, which we think are very important. We'll continue to do this informally by observations and interactions and getting to know each child individually. This is crucial to good early years practice. We'll keep you informed about your child's progress through Key Worker System, where we will have an allocated key worker and we will make sure that we meet at least twice a year and communications through, such as the homeschool book and ways in which you can get to see us. You will also be informed about your child's progress more formally at the end of the year through an annual report. The role of the key worker. You may be familiar with the term key worker as your child already has a key worker in their preschool or nursery. We use this system at Traumaca as well. And when your child starts school, they will be assigned a key worker. Their primary role will be to settle their children into reception and make sure they feel safe and secure. They are an initial point of contact for that family, but not the exclusive one. On our key worker leaflet, a second key worker is named. You will receive this leaflet later on in September. Every key worker has the responsibility for record keeping, collecting evidence and observations for each child in their group. This is supervised under the early years leader or the class teacher. They meet every week as an early years team to discuss the children in their groups and set next steps or targets for the children's learning. The key worker will schedule meetings for themselves and their families every term to discuss any issues and progress so that we can all work together. Our rolling snack. We have a rolling snack system in reception and nursery where the children can help themselves to a drink of water and a healthy snack throughout the morning. We have a choice of different healthy foods, for example, crackers and cheese, breadsticks, dips, cereals, yogurts. And this has proven to be very popular and the children have become very independent. They serve themselves and wash up after eating too. To cover this cost, we ask for a voluntary contribution of a pound per half term, please. This snack is eaten in addition to the free fruit we already have in school. So what else do you need to know? The first thing is we need the pupil details. We need that information sheet returning to us as soon as possible with a clear address, clear mobile number and clear email address if you have one. We send most of our information out now via email. So if we have your email address, we can keep you up to date as much as we possibly can. Please, if you ever change your mobile number or change your email address, make sure that school knows. Otherwise, we will still be using those in the future. Phone numbers are the most important because if your child is ill or they have an accident, we need to be able to get hold of you. And there have been times in the past where I've ended up in an ambulance with children because we've not been able to get hold of parents. And I have been on the brink of saying this child can go through for an operation because I am still in loco parentis. So please make sure we have your details up to date all of the time. Now for uniform and PE kit, information is already all on the website or you can contact Mrs Lane in the school office and she will explain where you can get uniform and PE kit from, how it can be ordered and how it can be paid for. Please, please make sure you label any uniform or any clothing that is coming into school. School jumpers are all red. They all look the same. And then children say, I've lost it and at one age five jumper looks exactly the same as another age five jumper please make sure your child's uniform is labeled and i do mean even if you can get into pants knickers shoes the whole lot needs to be labeled and then we don't have anything getting lost at the moment our pile of lost property is incredible it's like a mountain so please make sure your child's 
equipment and uniform is all labelled. We do offer children free fruit and we also offer snacks every day. Um, the staff do ask for a donation towards the other snacks that we provide, but other than that, they are entitled to free fruit throughout the infants. Any money that comes into school, if you're not paying online, which you can organise with Mrs. Collin or Mrs. Lane in the school office, any money that comes in otherwise must be in a named envelope, please, with your child's name, their year group, and what the money is for. And then it is very clear for us that nothing gets lost when it comes up to the office. As I say, online payments, you can contact the school office and they will send out a form for you explaining how you can get on to paying for everything online. Please make sure your child is in school as much of the time as possible. Yes, children do get ill and sometimes we need to keep them off because they are so unwell. If your child is that unwell, then again, ring the school, choose the option where you can report an absence and then follow that up with a letter explaining things. As I said earlier, we do send out our newsletter via email as much as possible because not only does that reduce our printing costs, it also means the newsletter gets directly to you instead of being left in school by your child or at the bottom of a bag where it gets ripped, torn, dirty or even juice spilt on it from their juice bottle. So please make sure we do have your up to date email address. More than happy to send it to more than one person if need be. We do use Twitter and Facebook to send messages out as well. So please do sign up for both of those and make sure that you are following us. And we use texting. We send out texts on a regular basis, either individually to parents, or it might be that a class text is sent out, or if your child is at a club, it'll be a club text, or sometimes as a whole school. Remember the ladies in the office are your first point of contact. So any questions you may have at any point during your child's journey through our school, please do contact them and see if they can help. You can contact them on the telephone or email as well. If your child requires medication at any time, then we do have a separate form that you do need to fill in. And again, please ask at the school office or contact the school office for that form. We have plenty of first aiders within the school and if your child is involved in an accident that has required first aid, we will of course let you know. It's always a good idea also to send in some spare clothes. Accidents do happen, especially when they first start school. So putting a pair, spare pair of pants and socks and possibly some shorts into their bag that are just at the bottom of their bag if they need them is always a good idea. I'll now hand over to Mrs Hamer who will explain more about how you can be involved with the school. Schools would not thrive without the valued support from parents. There are many ways you can get involved in school life. We have a friendly and active PTA who are always looking for new members. They also lead our parents forum where you can get to share your own views about school. Trimaker is always looking for parents to listen to children read as it is a valuable way to make progress. We also offer a number of parents courses throughout the year. Our Tigers Club is really important to our school and Mrs Kendall will now explain a little bit more about it. Hi everyone, my name is Mrs Kendall and I'm your Tigers Breakfast and After School Club Coordinator. When you register your child with Tigers, you'll have access to our wraparound care from quarter to eight in the morning through till 6pm every school day. This is depending on your own child care needs. We do lots of exciting activities and involve the children as much as possible with the planning. This is to ensure that your child is kept busy doing lots of things that they really enjoy. We've had mad science experiments, circus activities, den building, gardening, mass making, talent shows, baking. Dine Around the World theme nights where we try food from other countries, our famous trip to Blackpool Illuminations before October half term break and each year we celebrate our wonderful club with a party and lots of cake. This year Trumaca Tigers After School Club is eight years old. It's a good idea to register with us as you just don't know when you might need to pop your child into After School Club, even if it's just for a short period of time at the end of the school day. It gives you peace of mind if for some reason you think you might be running late to collect your child. 
This could be due to anything from an appointment running late, an interview taking longer than expected, not being able to get out of work on time, maybe delayed due to heavy traffic on the roads, or you might just want a little bit of extra time at the end of a busy day so you don't have to rush to collect your child. The Tiger team are really looking forward to welcoming all the new reception children in September. We hope to see you all very soon. Bye. Trimucker prides itself on being a true community school. We have strong links with our local PCSO Joe Moss as well as other community users. These include EDF, Morecambe Hawks, the Grand Theatre in Lancaster, Hesham Nature Reserve, health teams and local churches. We utilise as much as we can from our community and also join in as many events as possible. So what is Pupil Premium? Well, all children are entitled to a free school meal if they are in the infants. So that's reception, year one and year two. They all get a free school meal. What Pupil Premium does is if you are entitled to any kind of benefit, you can apply for the Pupil Premium money and that then comes into school. And that money is used for your child to engage in as much as we can offer in school. So that might be a reduction in the cost of a school trip, a reduction in the cost of a, a residential trip that we might be taking your child on later on in their schooling, or it might be that we can help with simple things like uniform, or we can buy equipment for your child for their learning within school. Please do apply for this if you feel you are entitled. And if you're not sure, again, pick up the phone, speak to somebody in the office, or ring the number on the form and speak to somebody in the head office. It's really important that we get this pupil premium applied for as it does benefit the school and your child by an awful, amount, an awful lot of money. Now, it's not just about your child that we're talking tonight. We're also talking about you and how we can help you in order to help them. This is very much a team approach and that's the way we've always been at Trumaker. It's about working together with parents to enable their children to do the best that they can whilst they are with us and moving on to high school. So we do have some musts. We would like you all to attend a phonics workshop. How that will look in September, I do not know. And again, it might be online by that point, but learning how we teach phonics and teach early reading is really important because it's very different than it was in my day and probably very different than it was in your day. And if you don't know how we do it, how can you help them the best you possibly can at home? So please do come or watch the phonics workshop when we've got it arranged. Please also come to parents' evenings. We have one every term. The first one is all about seeing how your child has settled in. It's very much uh, a meeting of you with the, with the teachers just to discuss that social aspect of settling in, how they've been, how they are making friends, how they are settling in. In February, we do a more formal meeting where you have a specific time and you will be told about how your child is attaining in the main areas and what else you could be doing at home to help them with their learning and help encourage them to do even better in the future. The final one is straight after reports and it, we call it our open evening where you're invited in and you can wander around the whole of the school and see the teacher that they've got this year as well as meeting their teacher for the following year. Please also remember that dropping off and picking up is really important. It's important that you are on time. Dropping off in the morning at 8.45 in the playground means that your child is set up for the day, they know what's going on, they know they are into that routine of school. Turning up at nine o'clock means your child is already off to a bad start. They're rushing in, they've got to quickly put their bag and their coat away, then they've got to race to assembly and they're all huffing and puffing and they are not settled. They've not come in calmly. So please make sure you drop them off at 8.45 every single morning. Picking up is equally important. We have had children in tears where parents haven't let the school know, but haven't turned up on time either. And they get very anxious children because they feel something is wrong, something might have happened, 
and they just don't know when mom or dad is going to turn up or whoever's going to be picking them up. So please make sure you are on time or that you have arranged for your child to go to Tigers after school care and arranged that they will then be picked up from there. Now there are a number of shoulds. These are things we would really encourage you to do as much as possible. Read and listen to stories with your child. Even if they're making it up, if they're just looking at the pictures and making a story up, that wonderful interaction of words and vocabulary is so important at your child's age right now. There is a clear, there is clear evidence that children who do not have the chance to speak, read and listen from early on can start with 14 million less words than those children who are actively engaged in it. So read to your child as much as you possibly can. Listen to them when they're talking. Actively ask them questions about the story or about what's going on. Talk to them. Use bigger language. Use longer words. Explain to them what some of these words mean. Please don't talk down to your child too much. Engage them in that wonderful, rich vocabulary that we have in English. So talk to them as much as possible and point things out to them. Point numbers out, point signs out, point letters out, point words out. See if they can start recognising anything as they are going around. Involve them when you're going shopping. Involve them in conversations as much as you possibly can. We know some children will talk for England and talk the hind leg off a donkey. Talking is the route to reading, is the route to listening, is the route to writing. So please do encourage it, even if sometimes it goes on for too long. Please make sure your child is physically active. We need to have children being able to use all of their fine motor skills as well as their gross motor skills. So playing and climbing outside is really important. Get them to be hanging off monkey bars, get them to be climbing trees safely, get them to be doing rolls, sausage rolls, all the way down hills, get them to be doing tumble turns if possible, get them to be doing as much as possible. And if possible, one ideal thing is to be lying flat on their tummy if they're watching television, lying flat and propping their head up onto their hands because that is arching their back the right way and giving them really good strong core development that will then lead to them having stronger arms which will lead them into having stronger hands, stronger fingers and being able to write better. That is clear evidence, so please do that as much as you possibly can. Have a go yourself. You'll find it harder probably as an adult than they will as children. We will have story sacks available from school at some point, but again, whilst we're in this lockdown, we can't be sending anything out from school, so they will start as soon as we possibly can. And we do have some audio books that also you can borrow from the school library. What to expect and when. This is a really useful guide for parents from the website foundationyears.org.uk. It contains some practical ideas for helping your child with their learning. In your pack, there is a copy of the 30 to 50 months age range. If you have any concerns after reading the section, you might notice that, then please contact us. We are always available to discuss any worries you may have about your child's development. So normally I would now go through what's in the pack that we provided you when you arrived at school. Of course, we're not doing that this year. So we have now put it all online on a new page that we've created, which you can be found at our school website, which is trumaca.lanks.com. .sch.uk and it is under the Our Parents tab. All of the information should be on there, but again, if there's something missing or you have another question, then please do get in touch with school. Again, we also use social media as much as we possibly can. So we have the school website. We also have a Facebook page, which you can find by just searching for Trumaca Primary School. So do find us, follow us and like us. And we also have a Twitter account, which is at Trumaca Primary. 
In addition to this, we have a YouTube channel, which you can find again by searching for Trumaca Primary School. And on there, we throw as many videos as possible, including the home learning that we're doing at the moment and any big events that we have so that photos can be shared with parents and relatives. And again, we email out as much as we possibly can. We want to communicate with you as much as we can so that there is a, this two-way flow of as much information as possible. There is also an app that we would encourage you to download and have a go at doing possibly over the summer. Some of them you might not still be able to depending on lockdown, but you might be able to do some of these wonderful things with your child. And if you do some of them, then please do tweet us or do email us and let us know. And if you don't mind us then retweeting things, we will do that. But it's a, a Bradford initiative of 50 things to do before you're five. There are some really great ideas. So do please have a look. And finally, please try not to worry. None of us knows what school is going to look like come September. We don't know whether we'll all still be wearing masks, still doing social distancing or what. All I can promise is we will do everything within our power to get your child settled, to get them to feel like that they belong in our school as quickly as possible. If you have any worries, then share them with the staff, but please try not to cry in front of your child on that first day. It is difficult when you're handing over your bundle of joy to us, but try and do any upset away from the children so that they don't pick up on your anxiety. So don't worry if you possibly can, but work with us and we will sort things out alongside you. Please do give them space. I know from my own children, when I used to pick them up, they would say they'd done nothing. And then a bit later on in the evening, when they were maybe having their tea or they were having a bath, they would then explain what they'd been doing during the day and who they'd been playing with. Give them space to have that. Don't badger them with questions straight away. Let them tell you in their own time, but do have a conversation. Don't stand with your phone and don't ignore them. Please make sure you're engaging with them as much as you can, but maybe if they don't want to give you any answers, just back off. They will tell you in their own time. And the most important point, and this is from somebody who's now got a 20 year old and an 18 year old, enjoy it with them because it is going to go so, so fast. So make sure you're totally involved with everything that school's doing, with everything that your child is involved in and enjoy it alongside them. These are magical years, so please do enjoy it. Now, hopefully you've got all the information that you need. As I say, there's more on our website on the page for parents and new starters. Just go under that Our Parents tab on the school website, you will find a raft of more, raft more information as well as videos from certain staff and other explanatory notes. So please do have a look, do go through things. And if you're ever in doubt, then give the school a ring or email us. We look forward to seeing you all in September and we just hope that we will have a start date that works for everybody. Even if it's a bit prolonged this year, we will try and get everybody settled as quickly as we possibly can in this whole new normal as people are calling it. But if you've got any questions before then, please do get in touch. Thank you for listening to this video. Hope you found it useful and not too boring with my droney voice. And we'll see you all in September.